Well, the first international break in the book, it is back to business in the top flight in England as the boys aim to stretch their seasonal profit even further. This is Betting Weekly Premier League Show. You're with myself, Dan Roebuck, while Nigel Seeley and Jack Wright are with me to mark your card with value plays across the weekend slate. Now, the last round of Premier League fixtures a fortnight ago saw nine of the ten games cashing with over two and a half goals. If you've backed overs, in every single game this season, the Premier League are showing a profit of just over six points to a level state, return on investment of over 15%. Now, the last time that we saw Nigel Seeley, he was jetting off to uh, New York, first class. Now, Nigel, you're in Greece on holiday. But as an unders backer, come on, fess up. Were you first class again or were you at the back of the bus? Well, the only thing I can say is I'm very happy I put it on the credit card. <laughs> you have to pay. You have to pay it to the end of the month. So if, if if it was paid at the beginning of the month, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to afford. There's boats here that go across. I'll be getting a boat home. I think that's the way we go. But I'm not panicking. Why are we panicking? This is a long haul. This is like you know, every we we teach people about betting, and the reaction is that people always go, well, "You want to be ahead of the curve rather than the end of the curve." So at the moment, yeah, it's good. But if you do this every season, Dan, at the beginning of every season, overs would be betting. Yeah, you know, you'd be winning money. You, you come back with those stats at the end of November, beginning of December, and then I will have a panic up and I'll be worried about my Dubai holiday. But if not, <laughs> if, not, if, not if not, then we might have to have a rethink. And yet next year, we might have to go to Canberra Sands or Eastbourne again. But, we'll have to do, uh, but, but, let's, but let's, just be, get, let's keep our feet firmly on the ground here. Yes, overs are cashing. Yes, we're looking at reasons. We're a lot of reasons that people are saying that the extra time in the second half and lots of added minutes... I think a lot of people, are, the, the strikers in the Premier League are that much better than defenders nowadays. We spend so much money on, on forwards. There's a lot of reasons to it. But when the cold weather sets in in November and December and they've got to go to Bramall Lane on a Wednesday night, I sound a bit cliche here, but let's just see. I mean, usually the goals, goals are up up until November. And uh, an old boss of mine used to say, remember, remember, goals go down in November. <laughs> there's no, <laughs> there's, no, uh, way, <laughs> there's <laughs> no way on earth an old boss of yours said that. You I just promise that you, up. I promise you, the guy <laughs> thought. To, Toby Brereton, Toby Brereton at IG Index, he used to I remember say, Toby. Remem- remember, remember, you, somebody, so you say, you remember, remember, un- unders bet as cash in November. Something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> but that. Uh, if, if, if we get to November or December and we are still looking at those statistics you say there, then I might have to uh, have a little bit of rethink about not only my travel my travel plans for the next, for the next year, but also my, uh, my, my strategy for betting. But I, I'm not too concerned just yet. So very small sample size. I can just see now, Nigel, getting on the plane and coming towards the, the stewardess. And obviously, if you're getting on a Boeing 747 or whatever, you know, it's left turn we know he's first class and basically you've got the the stewardess says unders left turn overs <laughs> right I, I think i'll be going i'll be doing the left turn in the few weeks time and carry on but i think i'll be working as a as a as a as a uh, air hostess <laughs> rather, rather, than, rather than traveling to the left uh jack uh is it is it a theme is it just too early what have you made of the fact that um uh, we've had a lot of overs over the course of uh, the first four match days in the premier league yeah, it's a small sample size. Nigel then said it as kind of something I was going to go and lead with, really. Um, and, and I think over a course of 40 games, 39 as it is this season currently, then you've you've only got a small amount of sides have been playing against each other, haven't you? So, you know, if you've got a Man City versus a, a Sheffield United, you're going to get overs. Not necessarily you could back overs in that particular game because, you know, you'd need to go over three and a half or so. But... Um, even so, there's not too much difference actually between this season and last season. There's five games, um, 22 of 40 went over at this point of time in the first four weeks last season, and it's 27 of 39 that's gone over this time. So a slight increase, but as you say, at least a full round of fixtures, or at least a, you know everyone's played each, each other once, we'll get a clear indication of where we're at with it, um, and each escape. Okay, take each game as it comes and each individual circumstances. So, yes, you know, a couple of late goals, we'll, we'll throw it out, especially at this early stage of the season. But we won't be getting carried away yet. So it won't be, um, won't be getting that, that ticket booked for Canberra Sands just at this moment in time. There's still hope. Canberra Sands is a very nice day, I must admit. It's my favourite uh, tourist place in the UK. So anyone's going to Canberra Sands, uh, it's a lovely place to go. He's keeping them sweet just in case. <laughs> just in that. case he has to go. <laughs> I live near Canberra Sands. Local people won't be watching this. 
<laughs> one other one other uh, talking point ahead of the Premier League getting uh, back underway and indeed all of the, the major European leagues, the top leagues. Um, international break, Nigel, we've just had. Uh, betters could be looking at squads thinking, well, look, Man United had 14 players away. Spurs had 13 players away. Some went to South America, you know, far flung places, even on the European qualifiers. If you end up going to, to Kazakhstan, Armenia, Georgia, those type of places. Is it a factor in your betting? Do you look at a game and think, do you know what? I, I don't know when those players, they came back. I don't know if they're going to start, even if they're their first choice. I'm just going to leave that fixture alone. How, how do you sort of quantify it in your mind when you're approaching a, a weekend card? I think it's very hard to break down the Premier League and look at teams that haven't had players that have gone on international break. I mean, you, you, you mentioned two or three players there, two or three teams there. But if you go down through every single team in the Premier League, you know, I saw that games in the non-league were cancelled because <laughs> of international break. League Two had three matches because of the, well, the international break. That just shows you what, you know, that shows you how crazy the world is now with all these different leagues popping up and their nations popping up. I think the League One, third league in England, had two matches last week because of international yeah. break. That was never the case. So if, you, if you're going to use that as an argument, you'll be, you won't be having a bet this week. I think it's much more significant for me is that there's the Champions League returns next week and the Europa League returns next week. I think that's much more in my radar. So you think teams will rotate week. ahead of it? I think, you know, especially teams who've got tough chapter matches, I think I'd be quite concerned about that. And I think if you go through history and look at matches before, prim, uh, before Champions League ties and especially after Champions League ties, Teams, you know, especially if you've got a long trip in Europe, I, they, that would be much, much, much more important to me than uh, the team that travelled to play, you know, a, a friendly in, in an international friendly or, or a meaningless Euro qualifier when they were very heavy favourites. So, no, I, it would, it, it's important, but I don't think it's as important as the fact that the Champions League returns next week. Uh, Jack, your take on international breaks and players coming back and, and teams potentially being weakened? Yeah, I think it's a consideration. Um, Nigel's right. Virtually every club's got 12 players going away all over the globe. Um, obviously, nowadays, it's not just those European qualifiers like it used to be back in the day. And again, Nigel rightly said there's only two games in League One that were, uh, weren't um, that went, went ahead last weekend because of the internationals. And of course, it's not just the full internationals. It's every age group down to like under 17s and so on and so forth. So, you know, and these players out on loan there as well, a big, big part of it. So, yeah, I think Liverpool was one that I did look at and as, as a potential under one because they were playing Wolves, didn't make the cut in the end. But also they, all their attacking players were, Salah was in Egypt, Nunes and um, Diaz were over in South America, not finished until the early hours of Wednesday morning. So when are they going to get back? And they've got an early kickoff this weekend as well. So lots of things to take into account. As there always is, but it's um, yeah, it's just one of those ones that to can take into consideration, and obviously, as we said, also Champions League coming up as well. As always the case, though, every week we have conundrums to solve, and uh, we look to come out on the right side of it with some profit. Yeah, it can skew the prices. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it makes no difference whatsoever. We've got six plays from the boys. Five games covered for you over match week five of the Premier League. We're going to kick off um, with Tottenham against Sheffield United here, which is 10 a.m. Eastern kickoff here. Tottenham very short, not quite the shortest on the card, but nearly at minus 375. Sheffield United plus 1,000 here with the draw plus 500. And the goal line is under an over three and a half, incidentally, just going back to the overs and unders conundrum for you. Uh, Nigel, we've already mentioned the fact that, look, players coming back from international break, not necessarily a factor, but Spurs did have 13 away, 11 of which um, did play for their international teams. Is this not potentially a, a good time for Sheffield United to play Spurs? Yeah, I, I would. I, I think potentially that you might look at the argument, but then potentially look at all the players that didn't go and the team that Tottenham will put out would still be strong enough to beat Sheffield United. Um, I mean, the first of all, before we go into this week, I've got to apologise for my poor performance last week. Last time we spoke about it, so we sort of hidden that away. I had a very bad. I thought it was 0-3. It was the first week we showed a, a negative a win from my perspective. Jack had a much better week, so that sort of gets us out of trouble a little bit. But uh, so I apologise for that, and uh, this I'm concentrating now on going forward here. I wasn't going to. I tried so hard to not look at any match where I could actually bet overs. Because I thought to myself, if I start betting overs, you two will be going, oh, here we go. We can tell them over. So I tried really, really difficult. I was like, I was, so what I've done here is not, it's a clever bit of play. I've actually gone for overs, but in a technical way. So I don't actually have to have a bet on overs. And I've gone for Tottenham minus one and a half. So you can catch on overs and we can still win. I said, I'm sure I like bet. So that was the reasoning for my, my, my bet here. But I, I think Tottenham here, I, I said, one thing I did say 
early in the season, like Tottenham will be a very good cup team and they get beat in the first round. Of the <laughs> cup. So that's another sort of thing. But I do think the way they play under the new manager and the way he's got them playing is a real entertaining way of football. I think Tottenham fans will be really in for a good season this year. I don't expect them to challenge for the, the title, but I think they'll be entertained. And we've seen that already this season with the way they play. They've got, you know, they've got rid of uh, Harry Kane and arguably... They're a much better side. Got this rid. That's around. a nice way to put it. <laughs> well, you know, when he's left, is he? what, what do you want to say? He's gone and he's gone. Harry Kane's gone. He's gone. He's, he's, you ask a Tottenham fan, they'll be like, he's gone. He's finished. We got rid of him. He's gone. They're not going to worry about the past. It's about the future. You know, we got rid of, we got rid of someone who took your job out. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, anyway, but what I'm trying to say is I think Tottenham are really good, entertaining. You look at their, you look at their style of play. Uh, Madison has come in and he's been a revelation. I think already, I think he's probably, uh, the, the, I mean, you say he's the best sign of the, of the Premier League season so far in what he's done for the what amount of money they're paying. Probably with Ward Prowse, I think at West Ham was equally a good sign as well. But he's sort of galvanised the club. He's taken on some responsibilities, the vice captain. He looks like he's playing for a place in the, in the England team. He's really thriving in this new surroundings and he's making the whole team tick. And what I see from Tottenham this season is really, really entertaining, going forward, going for goals. And when you think, consider that they've taken that goal element that Harry Kane has, has given them for, for ages. And Son now is, is the main man. He scored a hat-trick in the weekend. They look, they look great to watch. And I think Sheffield United last week, I was sip, sipping that champagne in first-class game, the under two and a half, or last time we spoke on the Sheffield United-Everton game. Not one of my best bets. It's quite funny, though, really, isn't it? Everything I ever do on this show, every everything I do with Because We Win, everything I get drastically wrong gets the highest amount of views that we've ever had. So on our tennis show, myself and Sean Calvert, the US Open, we had the best amount of views. So thank you very much for watching that. But we were right strong about Medvedev. I'm going all in on the money line. He gets beaten straight sets. Um, I'm on a, my hammock, uh, giving it the last <laughs> that Man United will win one nil last season, uh, and they get beat seven nil. And then last week, uh, the unders from first class and his two two. And we haven't been asked to do that video again this week, which is not. <laughs> yeah, I know why. Yeah. I was all <laughs> yeah. set to go to Buckingham Palace again. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I think that, I think they had a word and asked you to to leave recording from the. I think King Charles said, "Could you leave the white <laughs> front guard?" But now anyway, we're going back. I mean, Tottenham have scored two goals in every single match this season. Last week they won. Uh, they went to Burnley, won five two. Uh, obviously, Song got a hat trick. Madison again on the score sheet. The partnership there, uh, they're creating it looks formidable. And you, you would argue, obviously, last season Burnley was streets ahead of Sheffield United, streets ahead in, in, the, in the championship, and they put five past them last time. Sheffield United, no win so far this season. Obviously, a two-two draw last week against a poor Everton side. I, I think that's a, 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 a freak result. I don't expect that to continue. And I think going to Tottenham, despite all the players that missed in international action. I think this will be a high-scoring game, but I'm not going to say overs. But I think that most of the goals will be scored by Tottenham. I think that the Tottenham fans will get them over the line. I think I think the Tottenham Stadium is going to be a tricky place to go this season and get a result, as we've already seen. So I'm going to go for Tottenham minus one and a half. They've scored in at least two in every single game in the Premier League. I know it's a small sample. And um, putting five past Burnley on the road and then going to Sheffield United, who were, what, how many points behind Burnley were they last season? 13, 13 yeah. points? I'm not, sorry, 13 points off. I think Tottenham justify favouritism here and strong favouritism, and I think they win quite easily, because I think that's the only way they know how to play at the moment. It's an overs by stealth, isn't it, really? It's uh, no, Tottenham, no, Tottenham, 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 Tottenham minus one and a half. Uh, on the on the uh, the handicap at uh, at minus one thirty, minus one twenty five. Sorry, Dan. Just, some people have asked about you know not a lot of people watch this show in America who, who don't really understand the Asian market, uh, and they've they've asked us to explain sometimes. So uh, an eight, a minus one and a half is basically Tottenham to win by two goals or more. So uh, it's exactly the same as the, the handicap on the American football, the spread on the American football. It's a one and a half start for uh, for Sheffield United, and we're going to Tottenham minus one and a half. So we're saying that Tottenham will win by two or more goals. Yeah, it's it's a more regular handicap, isn't it, really, rather than a true Asian. We have got an Asian handicap from Jack a little bit later on the show, which might need a little bit more explaining. Speaking of Jack, we're going to go with uh, Jack's pick, first of all, in the next game, Villa against Palace again, 10am. Nigel's got a selection in this one as well. We've talked about overs, uh, Jack, extensively. Villa uh, mm. are the kings of the overs, certainly this year. I mean, Unai Emery, I think wherever he's been, been exciting uh, to watch. Sometimes his teams don't win. But there's always plenty of goals at, at, at both ends. Talk as you get to, through your selection here. And Nigel, cover your ears. 
<laughs> yeah, I've broken cover, haven't I? I've gone 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 rogue over two and a half goals. <laughs> Um, it, it looks an attractive price. I must admit, I, well, before the, the um, kind of prices came out, I would I'd look at this and there was two um, bets I liked in this and Nigel's gone for the other one. So that's a that's a good thing. So hopefully we can both cash with those here. Um, I have settled for goals because uh, I just this Villa side just looks... Um, I think there's a few sides in the Premier League at the moment that I would use the word chaos to describe. And I think that's why we're seeing quite a few goals because... They're a little bit all over the place. They're not quite got that balance right that we're used to seeing where there's a strong defence, like rigid structure. And it's just like, well, we're going to go and score loads of goals and we're going to outscore you. And the, the focus has been put on, on these attack-minded players. So also sides that play a very high line, a high defensive line that do leave themselves prone to um, the counter-attack and also those balls over the top. And Villa are certainly one of those sides that do like to play that high, high line. Um, I did see a stat during the week on how many passes Trent Alexander-Arnold made last time out when they won 3-0. Uh, I think he made about 66 in total over the game, but about half or more of them were over the top of that Villa line for, for um, his teammates to chase onto so or, or to them. Um, as a result, we say we've seen loads and loads of goals for Villa and in Villa games this season. Four of the last five at home have been over two and a half goals. Um, they have won eight on the spin across the two campaigns now at home. Um, there are only one home game this season ended in a 4-0 win against Everton. And we know traditionally Everton aren't the easiest to score against. So um, that was good. And obviously that was off the back of getting hammered 5-1 in the opening game of the season. So they've had a mixed start, but two really tough away games at Newcastle and at um, Liverpool. Obviously shipped eight goals in that period of time. But in between that, they've gone goals galore themselves. So, so bounced back with that 4-0 win against Everton, then went and scored eight across two games in the um, Conference League. And then a, 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 talking to Burnley, another one, another side that went to Burnley and, and got a good result, winning 3-1. So uh, you're right in what you say. All four games this season have seen uh, over two and a half goals, um, plus two and a half units uh, profit if you level staking across those 68% return on investment. That's not the reason just to go and pick it, but it's always a good sign that that's the the, the standard that you're looking at as far as their um, data is concerned. 25 goals in their six games this season, averaging four goals, just over four goals per game. So all of them over two and a half goals. It does point towards that. I was very surprised, admittedly, when I set out what I'd be looking for as far as a bet to see this one available at a backable price. That comes down to Roy Hodgson. That comes down to Crystal Palace being a little bit um, considered a defensive side. Certainly started the season that way. But the last couple of games seem to reverted back to a bit like Hodgson that we saw uh, when he came into Palace last season where the games were open and, and they were scoring goals. And he does seem to get the best out of the likes of Eze. Um, I think with Villa, they're going to miss Mings. And I've got a feeling that the, the Palace two main key players, they've got Eze and Edouard, We'll have an opportunity to um, cause a little bit of havoc in the Villa back line. Um, Ezer and Edward, 19 shots between them. Oh, both of them have had 19 shots this season. Only Haaland's had more than them with 20. So they're getting plenty of chances. They're taking plenty of shots. It's a matter of, of course, of them scoring those shots and, and whether they can uh, um, keep Villa out. I don't think they will do that. Uh, so I think with that Villa forward line, Watkins, Diaby, Bailey, um, they're making good use of their wing backs. They might be a flat back four this weekend, but with Cash and uh, with Dina on the other side, certainly players that like to get very, very well advanced. So I think we'll see a lot of forward momentum from Villa and the opportunity for Palace to hit on the break, which does scream goals. So um, we said we saw Palace involved in a five goal thriller against Wolves last weekend, which we weren't expecting. Um, and there were six goals in their cup game prior to that. So they're now starting to kind of get involved in those games that we did see last season. So for me, I've gone with the goals in this particular one. But I expect. Over two and a half goals for uh, Jack. Uh, Nigel, you've got a pick in this one uh, as well. Uh, and although we're hoping that both teams are going to contribute to the scoreline, you believe that Villa uh, are good value to win this one? Yeah, I mean, again, I think it's, I'm not, I'm not making excuses, but I think the Premier League is, is quite difficult at the moment to handicap. Uh, I think that obviously that you've, got, you've got very, very short prices about the top four or five in the betting. You have very difficult games. But there's, there's a cigarette paper between the teams in, in the middle section and the bottom teams are very bad. So I think it's, I think this year is going to be a very, very slightly, uh, uh, if you're looking for the tra traditional markets that I bet, and I think it's, 
pretty hard to find much value. I think, you know, we might have to delve down. To, I hate to say it, but we might have to delve down into the lower sort of uh, lesser prop markets to find more value as the season goes on. Because I think the, the gap, the gaps between the top and the bottom is so, so wide. And, and I think the, the value is hard to find now. Um, the one thing I would say about Villa is that I've sort of taken the early assumption of Villa is that they're, they're a bit of a flat track bully. I think they're a side that will put four or five past teams at the bottom and, and bulldoze them away. But when they go against the big boys, I think they're going to get found out. I think they're sort of that sixth, seventh team. And I think they're going to be way, way off the pace again, as we've seen from the results. Beaten very heavily by Liverpool, being beaten he- very heavily by Newcastle, but then smashed teams lower than them. And I think, that's, I think they're a good bet, especially at home when they play teams that you predict to be or project to be in the bottom half of the table. So that's where I see... Villa, and I think the value of Villa here is to oppose them maybe on the Asian handicap against the, the bigger clubs for the reasons that Jack said there. They leave themselves very much open, and the better teams like the Man Cities and Liverpool and Newcastle can can to make them, you know, to expose their vulnerability and put two or three past them. But against the teams at the bottom half, especially at home when the crowd's behind them, uh, Emery lets them play with flair and, and make confidence and they can score three or four. So that's where I've sort of early assumption after five games in put Villa. So for that reason, I think they're a bet here at minus 110 to beat Crystal Palace. Um, <clears throat> Crystal Palace, I've got this kind of uh, thing about them They've you know, over the last couple of seasons that if you bet Crystal Palace away from home, I think it's like three seasons that you would make money on Crystal Palace uh, bet them on the road. The reason why that is because they beat Man City twice. If it wasn't for that match, you'd be doing your absolute brains. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a stat that's quite misleading. So um, I, I'm, not con- I'm not convinced by them. Uh, I think if you, you... Also, I'm not a massive fan for trends. I don't really like it, as I've said so many times in here. But one thing I did notice that, is that um, Crystal Palace have only won once in the last 32 years at Aston Villa. And they have played quite a lot of times in that period. You know, you know a lot of divisions where you say, oh, well, Liverpool haven't won in 40 years against Luton when they played twice. It, it's <laughs> irrelevant. But in this occasion, they have played quite a few times. So it's, it's, a, it's a ground that... Uh, they don't, they don't like to go to. And I think that, that with Emery, I think he will let loose on, on Palace. And I think it'll be an entertaining game. I do agree with Jack. I think if you were going to have a bet over-under, you can only bet on the over in this match. My only slight concern... Clip that up. And, Clip that up. It's, it's an only slight concern. <laughs> I said if, and an only slight concern is that we all know how well and how important Aston Villa take the Europa League and Emery takes the Europa League. And the fact they have to go to Legia Warsaw on Thursday is a slight concern for me. So that would be a worry. Uh, if they're at home against a weaker opposition, I would probably go a little bit stronger. But the fact they travel to Poland on Thursday and the fact that we know that Aston Villa will be bang up for this trophy and probably amongst the favourites to win it, given that Emery's record, he wants to preserve that record, that would be a slight concern for me. But I think given where I see Villa at this part of the moment in time, I think they're a side that you want to be with at home against bottom half sides. But when they go up against teams bigger and better than them, I think they're going to come clearly second best. Uh, Villa to win over two and a half goals, incidentally. Same game, parlay, plus 180. Uh, Man United, Brighton next up again, 10 a.m. Uh, Saturday, Eastern. Uh, United, our favourites, plus 118, um, which I can't quite believe. I'm going to get Nigel's thoughts on that in a sec. But we have got a play uh, from Jack first and foremost. They've got a really good record in terms of scoring goals away from home. Uh, Brighton, uh, Jack, and it's sort of the basis to a certain extent, um, of your selection. Talk us through your play here for Man United, Brighton. It is. I wanted to fade Man United here. Um, I was surprised to see him favourite. And again, I nearly pulled the trigger on Brighton double chance, which is a backable price. Uh, In the end, I've gone for simply on Brighton goals. Over one and a half Brighton goals at plus 110, I thought was a great price at plus money, given that Man United's problems on the field and off the field have not been impressive in their opening few games on the field and it's chaos off it for more than one reason, which we don't need to go into now. Um, And and Brighton have started the season exceptionally well. Uh, They've carried on from where they left off kind of last season. Uh, And I think I want to get on side with Brighton before we now talked about it, before the European action starts. Uh, because then their squad might well be stretched and tested a little bit, and uh, that will be a time to possibly look at uh, going against them. But for now, uh, I think this game suits them going to Man United. Um, they were the last side to beat Man United. That was on the opening weekend of last season. So that was another reason to kind of just go against it because of that very, very strong Man United record. Um, 
I was prepared to more go on the on Brighton scoring a couple of times rather than that they were then going to go and get a win or or, or even like a point from it. So uh, Bayern Munich is the game that um, Man United have got in the Champions League. Obviously, back in the Champions League is a huge game for them away at Bayern Munich. Harry Kane's Bayern Munich, of course. So um, that's a huge one on the horizon for them. Um, a very tough one, of course, but you know they're going to have some kind of focus on that. Um, and, and I just feel that Brighton can take advantage of it. We know what they're like under Roberto De Zerbi. They've been so exciting to watch. 36 games under the him uh, so far. They've scored 73 times. That's an average of just over two per game, which is an incredible record over that period. Uh, 17 away games, and they've only failed to score once uh, under his charge So in the Premier League. So a phenomenal record, suits them down to the ground as to how they play. They've scored in their last 15 away games as well, two plus in nine of those. So it all bodes well. They won't have any fear going to Manchester United. Obviously, haven't won their last time out. They've also won the last three Premier League games against Man United as well. So um, that all, all, all looks good. They've got players in great form. Obviously, Evan Ferguson's been talked about as a possible Man United player this time next season, um, should he wish to go. And I dread to think how much Tony Bloom would be charging him for that. But um, at this moment, I've got his first hat trick uh, as an 18-year-old last week and a very impressive win against Manchester um, against Newcastle. Uh, De Zerbe actually called it himself as a fantastic performance, uh, one of their best, bounced back from that disappointing defeat to West Ham and back amongst the goals as well. So they've scored 12 goals across their four games so far this season. We know Man United have got defensive issues as well. Um, they're going to have to try and implement some new players into that, that squad at this moment in time and also say, bear in mind that they're going to have one eye uh, on that um, Bayern Munich game coming up. So I just I just feel that with with how the setup is at Old Trafford, with a confident Brighton, they can go and score at least twice there and cash this better plus money. Plus 110, over one and a half goals. Brighton, Nigel, qu- quickly on this one. I mean, why are the layers pricing United as favourites in a game like this? I mean, are we not beyond this now? Um, I think it's that home record they have then. I mean, their home record is extremely strong. I mean, if I, I, I wouldn't have bet Brighton at the price. I'd, I'd probably bet the draw, you know. I, if I was looking if I was looking at a way to get against them, I think, I think you know, we talk, we've spoken about Manchester United having Bayern Munich, which is a huge, huge match and I, their biggest match of the, of the group stage so far. But who have Brighton got in the Europa League? I haven't got the fixtures. I mean, who have Brighton played, Jack? Do you know who Brighton played on Thursday? They're in the Europa League, aren't they? I don't know. And that, I'll and find that is, out. That, that is their, well, that's they're going to be, that's a huge match for them as a mm. club. First time in Europe. I mean, that is, that will be a massive occasion for them. So, that, you know, we talk about Manchester United having one eye on, 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 the, on the Bayern Munich game. Well, Brighton will definitely, definitely have one eye on their first, their, their debut in European football, which will be. They're a, at home to AEK. Well, that's going to be a huge, huge occasion for them. So that, I mean, so that equally takes a little bit away from their performance. And now, I, I mean, if I, I couldn't bet, Brighton at the price. I couldn't bet Manchester United at the price, but I I could see both of them getting a point and you know and and moving on to a huge midweek for them both. And uh, um, so I I'd, I'd probably go for the draw. Uh, well, just one other thing, if if Harry Maguire starts, I mean at the minute we think it's going to be Martinez and Lindelof at the back, doesn't it? But Maguire's got all this stick recently. If he starts, does he move the market negatively for United? Do you think? If if he starts, I'd, I'd actually. Do, do, do you think the market would actually move? No, 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 no. no. Listen, I mean, who, he's, who else have they got? I mean, we know. I think the fullback positions are much more worry for concerning for for Manchester United. It's just he's I mean, so, he's, he's so in the headlines at the moment. I remember when Haaland didn't start for Man City last season, and everyone thought that City were playing with eight players. I mean, it was ridiculous. City yeah, but he has a few. He's he. There's certain players that have massive, massive reactions. I mean, uh, Harry Maguire playing for Manchester United was isn't going to have that much aggression, and I expect a performance from him. I would, I would be more, more. I would be, be more, more confident. In, I, I'd be more interested in betting the score any time if he played to prove a point from a corner or something like that because he's going. You know, he's going to. I mean, I think. I think. You know, let's be fair. I, I followed England a lot for the last two years in a lot of major tournaments, right? And Harry Maguire has never let the England national side down in any to, any tournament I've ever played. I'm not okay. saying if he was if he was one and one up against Mbappe in a, in a sprint, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't fancy him. Or, or if he's in a World Cup final up against. Uh, a, a, a Haaland or a Ronaldo or anything like that, I wouldn't fancy him. But the stick he gets is, is undeserved. And I think that he he will, I, I think he'd be 
motivated by. He's the kind of character who would score a goal and say, put two fingers up to your. So I, I'd rather bet him to score than the negative room. But I think a draw. Okay. If I was going to have a bet, I'd go for a draw. Okay. All right, thanks, Gareth. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to Everton versus Arsenal. Got a quiz question for you here. Uh, Everton are plus 525, Arsenal minus 200. Incidentally, there's been a little bit of interest in Everton, the draw plus 360. Quiz question for you, Jack, uh, mm-hmm. and for Nigel, if Jack gets it wrong. Um, 2021, just three seasons ago, Everton, after four games, were where in the Premier League table? Mm, first. They were first. Good knowledge from Jack. That's why he's on the show. What kind of question is that? If it comes to me, I'd have said bottom. It wouldn't have been... A, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been what, what kind of stupid question is that? I'm you just trying to... Old, old seventh and ninth. And then, oh, let's be, oh, brilliant. I'm making... The, one or the I'm other. making... If I'm making the. First, I'm oh, I that's one or the other, but one's white and one's wrong. <laughs> oh God! I'm well, making the point the that, that, no that, that, that I'm, make, I'm making the point, or at least trying to. I'm making the point that <laughs> things can happen fast, and it was only three seasons ago. Evans started the season top of the table, four wins from four. It's a complete turnaround now. Anyway, let's move <laughs> on from my Bamba Gascoigne impression. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you have to Google that one, the American listeners. Yeah. Um, uh, this you're, not is, uh, from, you're not coming live from Norwich, are you? This, <laughs> this is <laughs> quiz of the week. Yeah. This is this is uh, at Goodison Park. It's eleven thirty Eastern time on Sunday. Um, mood around Arsenal is good. Everton, not so much. Um, uh, Jack, uh, talk us through your selection here because we have gone for a proper Asian line pick. All yours. Yeah, and I've, I've finally been able to crowbar a lower, um, an unders bet unders. in here. Yeah, you'll be, yeah. You'll be invited back next week. Nigel will be happy. I know. I've got to look on. You know, I know. I know which like my bread's buttered. So uh, yeah, <laughs> happy. Uh, under three is the Asian line here. Um, I wouldn't have played under two and a half, but I'll certainly play under three in this one. Which What's the difference? Means, Go on. Yeah, basically means that uh, if there is three goals exactly, we'll get a push. We'll get a refund on our stake. The only way we can lose this bet is if we uh, see four or more goals, um, which, of course, our good friends Everton are involved, which is usually unlikely. It does happen from time to time, as we know. But uh, I've gone for this one purely because of I just feel this has got the makings of being a bit of a grind for Arsenal. Not been massively impressed with them. They've got the job done. Obviously, things could have been very, very different with that Man United performance. Um, that looked like they were 2-1 two, two, down going into injury time um, with that offside call. Obviously, it was right. Um, and uh, as it then came to pass, obviously, uh, they made the most of it and took advantage of it with a couple of injury time goals of their own. And it suddenly looks like a great scoreline, 3-1 against United. Um, but I say, I think they played all right. And I think Arteta, as we expected him to, kind of went back to basics a little bit with more kind of the traditional setup. It's definitely going to help that having Gabriel back. He's obviously now... With Arsenal, certainly until at least January, so we can put the transfer stuff to bed there. Uh, and having him and Saliba together in that back line will certainly make Arsenal a lot more solid, which is, of course, what we want for this particular bet. Ben White over at right back. We know that works well as well with Saka in front of him. So it's looking more like that traditional side and also with Zinchenko coming back in. So I think on that side of it, with the addition of Declan Rice in that middle, Arsenal now suddenly looking a lot more solid. And, of course, over against the Everton side that are generally toothless. So they've only scored in one game this season so far in the league. Um, and was a, pretty much a repeat of, obviously, the, the problems that they had last season as far as scoring goals are concerned. This one, to me, seems a little bit similar to the Arsenal's only away game so far this campaign, where they went to Crystal Palace, got a 1-0 win, had to wait until the 54th minute to get that goal. It was from a penalty. I was then had a man sent off and, and kind of saw the game out. So I could see a similar situation here, but we've got quite a few goals to play with, of course, um, for us to be able to cash this bet. So no goals, one goal, two goals. Happy days. We win it. As I say, if there are three, then uh, that would mean a push. Um, thing is, with, with Sean Dyche, he just doesn't concede too many goals at home. Uh, since becoming um, Everton's manager. And they certainly don't score any. They've not scored more than one goal uh, under Dyche at Goodison Park since he's been there. 11 home games in the Premier League that they've had. Um, and so that's he'll set up tight. He'll look to kind of get a foothold in the game and make the most of set pieces. And I'm sure Arsenal will be well aware of that. So they'll look not to give too many free kicks in the in, in kind of dangerous areas or corners away as well. So... Um, I think the midfield three for Everton are crucial. They're probably the best and strongest part of the side. Obviously, they've got a decent keeper in Pickford as far as um, shot stop is concerned. 
but they'll look to try and keep Arsenal kind of away from that slightly weak looking defensive line. Of course, this was um, Dyche's first game in charge last season, ended in a 1 0 win. Uh, and this is a bit of a bogey round for Arsenal as well, which they're re- well aware of. It's been very well documented as well. Um, so it's um, it's one that they've not won in any of the last five visits to. Um, and as I said, they're generally not, not too many goals there. Three wins and two pushes across those five here between these two sides. Um, Everton this season, two 1-0 defeats at home as well. Um and the last game of last season was 1-0 also. So the last three have only seen one goal in the Premier League. As I said, Arsenal's only away game this season was 1-0 to Palace. And the last two last season were uh, a 1-0 loss and a 2-0 win. So not a lot of goals around in there. I also think as well, say one I've kind of taken into account a little bit of coming back from international break and it with a European um, competition coming up. It's going to be one of those ones that screams to me it's been a little bit tighter than possibly what uh, the line has been set at and what people are expecting of Arsenal probably going here and getting a 3 or 4-0 win. I don't think that's going to be the case at all. And it will be a, a, a lot more of a tighter match. So I'm prepared to take that under three goal line. Minus one one three under three on the Asian money line. Final selection comes on Monday night, 2.45 Eastern kickoff. Forest against Burnley. Forest of the favourites plus one one five. Um, we've talked about Forest Nigel this season and the fact that they had a good home record last time. It's one of the reasons, if not the reason, that they stayed in the Premier League. And you are predicting more of the same in their game against Burnley. Yeah, well, they got the job done for us, didn't they? Against Sheffield United, albeit a little bit fortunate in the 2-1 win earlier in the season. I've said on this show uh, many times, I've also said in, in a couple of periods I've done on America, that I think that not a forest are a side that massively underrated in the Premier League. I think they're, I think they're potential to be in the top top 10. I've said that for all season. I think they're a really good side, good manager, and at home they're going to be very, very hard to beat. But for some reason, they're, they're being underrated. And uh, I think they're massively underrated here. We, you mentioned it last time we did a show, uh, Dan, about potentially that uh, there was a move on Burnley against, was it Aston Villa, wasn't it? Was it Aston Villa? Yeah, it was Aston Villa. And uh, we found that obviously Aston Villa didn't have the goalkeeper playing. There was a move in Asia for, for Burnley. Well, there's a move in Asia again here. I mean, not a forest of Gary off. They're now plus uh, 115. They were minus 110 over the week. So there's money. To, there may be a side, Burnley, that the you know the Asian syndicates sort of tag on to one team that they think they're, they're not doing the, not performing as well as the XG or they're not performing as well as they should do. And, and Burnley may be outside, but they didn't win the money last time, did they? They're absolutely battered by Aston Villa here. Um, so, and, and they, haven't, they haven't won a game. They've looked really, really low in confidence. They haven't done anything. And Forrest at home, as we said last season, they had the best home record in the bottom half of the Premier League. Uh, only, only, I think they were sixth best in the whole of the Premier League. And on the road, they had the worst records in the Premier League. So that sort of sums up they, what they are. It's a night match, which uh, has always got an electric atmosphere at Nottingham Forest. I think, that, you know, going there, has to, you know, they've got Arsenal, the way that Arsenal home this season and how that, that uh, the Emirates has changed. Well, the city ground is right up there with, with the atmosphere. It's, it, it's electric and that there's very hard to beat. They're very fr- on the front foot. Cooper likes to play and they've got a goal scorer in the side. And the other reason why I think the price might be the way they are is because Burnley beat them in the Carabao Cup, the League Cup. But that's irrelevant. You know, there's a starting 11 for Nottingham Forest in that night. I think maybe only two of the, the 11 will start here. And uh, I, think that, I, think they want, I think they win this. I think the price at plus 150 is wrong. 115 is wrong. On my prices, I think they should be around about minus 110, which they or- originally were. And for some reason, I think the Asian money is coming. The syndicate money is coming again for Burnley. But they left it behind last time. And I'm going to take a chance there and leave it behind again this week. Great stuff. I think with Burnley, um, it's unusual for a, a side to get promoted to come in and look to play that attractive, expansive play out from the back football. And the massive difference between the Championship and Premier League is you get make a mistake, you you get punished. And yeah. certainly in those forward areas for Forest, they've got players that are, are clinical, like striker that's clinical, and they've got like some Morgan Gibbs White. Um, Alanga's come in and played really well as well. They've got a lot of vibrant options in those forward areas, so I think they could certainly catch out and, Burnley. And just, in just, that. just one thing on that, they've got a huge amount of pace, and I, I didn't mention it in, in, when I spoke there, but they're coming on the back of arguably their biggest ever Premier League win against Chelsea. Now, you might say that oh, they've beaten Arsenal at home and they've beaten other teams to prove, but the fact that they only won one road match last season and then they went to Chelsea last time. That must be huge confidence. They know they can beat anyone at home. 
And I think they're a team to really be with this season. They're, you know, they're, they're amongst the favourites for relegation or like six favourites for relegation. They're not going down. They're, they'll, they'll be pushing high up to, for a top half team. Like, you know, I'd bet them to finish above the likes of Crystal Palace this season. I think Forest will have a real good season. A Burnley going down plus three hundred to plus two fifty. There's not been that much of a movement, but they've had a poor you're, start. You're only, you're only. Well, you're, you're playing for one place. I think. I think Luton and Sheffield United mm-hmm. will go down. You've got Everton. You've got some bad teams down there as well. I mean, they're, they're going to be amongst the mix. But you know, if the if the Asian money suggests that they're coming, you would you would expect them to to win points. They they don't usually get it wrong. But when they do get it wrong, the Asian syndicates they get it wrong at this time of the do, year. Do you think with that? Do you do you think it's a little bit of a legacy? Of, of the way that they won the championship. I was speaking to Will White um, about sort of ratings and, and syndicates coming for teams that you can't quite work out why. And we were talking about uh, Newcastle and, and, and Milan in the Champions League. And he was suggesting that Newcastle could be sent off favourites even in San Siro, simply because the ratings for the Premier League are higher. Newcastle are a Premier League team. Therefore, they will be rated higher than Milan. And we, we couldn't quite get, or I couldn't get my head around it. Is, is that a legacy of their, their very easy championship win that they're still rated quite higher, quite high by, by certain syndicates because of the metrics they had last season? Yeah, I think, I think, I think you look at that, that Burnley, the way they won the league last year and, and the style. Jack's a much better guy to speak about the championship than I am. But I think if you, the way I look at it, and, and this is how I've always looked at it, I always look at the FA Cup betting. So when teams in the FA Cup betting, like Burnley last season, the FA Cup were like forty to one, and there was five Premier League sides that were below them, and, and they thought that so they must rate them higher than yeah. the other guys. But they, obviously, when they come up the level, and then they get they have to recruit. But the other sides recruit, and and the, and the other the other way you look at it as well is you look at League Two last season. I mean, Wrexham and Notts County in League Two ran, ran away with League Two, and they were the first and second favourites for League One this season. So it shows you it was a weak league. Burnley were considered higher than a lot of six of the bottom six teams. I think they'll come good. I think the manager will come good, and I think they'll be able to attract players because of the manager. I don't think they're going to worry about. And I think they'll get. They'll be hard to beat at home, but because there's worse, there's worse sides. But not in the Forest at plus one fifteen. Given what they've done last season and their performances so far this campaign, just looks a little bit too big price to me. Yeah, Burnley's first away game this as well, so it'll be interesting to see how they go about it. But um, so I think. Vincent Company is a large part of where the the optimism is behind Burnley. Harry got him playing last season, but he's, he's still relatively new in management, isn't he? He was obviously in Belgium for a bit. He's then had a f- phenomenal season in the Championship last season where they were just outstanding. But confidence and momentum are big factors. They definitely had that last season and just ran with it. This season, all right, they've had a very tough start with the teams they've played. Spurs, Villa, Man City. This is their kind of first game really against a side that's on par with them or that they're looking to be on par with. Um, a, a defeat in this one, especially a, a bad one. And then, you know, he's already said they need to step up quickly. And uh, by quickly, I think he means here. But, um, you know, that Forest home record is phenomenal. And um, I said certainly confidence from the fact that they they Arsenal a tough game. They should have beaten United, having been two up inside four minutes. And then they got a win at Chelsea. So they're proven that they are looking to be a lot better than they were last season. Um, right, let's wrap things up because we've overran quite a bit here and Nigel needs to get to aqua aerobics in the pool. <laughs> I've I already think. done that. I've already done that. <laughs> I'm playing some French. I'm in the semi final against some French kid at the table today. How old is he? Eight. Uh... <laughs> Listen, mate. Fifteen, I bring him. Let down him. Well, get best, best bets, Jack. What's your best bet on the weekend card in the Premier League? Uh, goals at Villa. Goals at Villa, over two and a half. We like Nigel. What's your best bet on the card? I'm going to knock the Forest at plus one fifteen to beat Burnley. I think it's too big. Great stuff. Uh, is it is it happy hour yet, Nigel? Every hour's happy hour. With me. <laughs> what is your, what's your schedule? Is it is it Acro? Is it karaoke? A plate smashing later? No, it's a relaxing weekend. Relaxing week with the misses because there's no tennis this week. Tennis starts on Wednesday. No international break, so. After working very, very hard, I thought, well, let's just do nothing, sit and do nothing. That's what I've done. Brilliant. Well, many thanks for popping on the podcast and the show this week, because you know, as you say, you have been busy. Uh, Jack, many thanks uh, for your company as well. That is a wrap for week five of Betting Weekly Premier League show. Plenty of content on uh, Bet Rivers via all your usual social media channels as well. As well. Stay informed uh, via at Because We Win from all of us. It's goodbye.